Good morning, folks. We got to play Eldraft last night. And I think it's been quite a while since I've done one of these videos. Or maybe I've done so many Red Book of Magic review videos that I just don't realize that it wasn't all that long ago. But anyway, our GM uh, had been sick, so we had to cancel a game. And I know we rescheduled once. And uh, he's still a bit under the weather with his throat. <clears throat> so we, we cut it short. Uh, but... We are here, I need to double check the year, 685 of the Lords of Bloodstone, which is year 29 of Lady Tamara, I believe that is correct. It's year 8 of the Zodiac, which is Sarkemus, Magic Initiation Advancement, I don't know. It's month 2, which is Alor, which is the spring month, first month of spring. We are in week 1, day 1, which is still, it's half day of work in the afternoon. And we were left with, do we feel up to it at going to these um, keeps in the borderlands of the, of the Forg Empire to um, gain experience, impossible treasure to prepare us to go to the Vortex. Uh, da -da 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 -da. And to show <laughs> the guys who are paying us that we can actually survive doing this. Okay. Herman's going to get back to us in a week or two. Two later, he does show up with a Captain Borden. He's leading his guards. There's um, Samadar. Shoot, I don't remember. Okay, well, leading guards. The purpose of the guards in Captain Borden is to establish a base camp for us up in the valley so that we have a place that we can, a safe place from which we can make expeditions out. Good to go. Um, they've got supplies for three weeks. Um, there's a site in the valley with a pass that goes into Forge Old Kingdom. Uh, this is obviously an interest to the investors <laughs> because ancient battles took place here. The historian has told them told them previously that the battle had expanded across the valley floor. And as the Bloodstone forces pushed against the Forge troops, the Forge troops retreated up into the pass. In the pass, there's an old fortification, but they were routed out of that and off back into Forge domain. So the entire area has a potential for uh, discovering artifacts, especially objects of magical nature. Okay, they knew. Okay, back then, anciently, people knew how to make things that we have lost the knowledge of how to do now. So anything we can find is of not a practical um, interest. But also, you know, academic interest. How, how did they make this? What is this thing? That kind of stuff. Okay. Obviously, it's a dangerous area. There's all sorts of things that come out of forest domain or residing in the mountains, right? You know, there's different strategies that we can pursue. We can look for places in the valley. Or we can just keep into the past. You know, but, you know, there are goblins and orcs and such. They also investigate this area. And if they find anything, they're going to take it back to their, their, uh, their caves, etc. Okay. There are also several areas, specific areas you might investigate and there is a stream or a river uh, that comes down out of the valley and Captain Borden's plan to set up camp in the eastern area of the beginning of the valley next to the river um, and so they will not be ranging far into the valley okay um, as uh, in our previous expedition to the mine the Baron uh, was kind of not orchestrating, but um, what's the word? Not supervising, you know. But anyway, he's got an interest because he just want dangerous stuff coming out, right? So, like before, anything we do find will be brought back and be evaluated. And if it's found to be too dangerous, <clears throat> they'll take it out of our hands, and then we'll get, you know. I didn't mention it, but last time it was a cut. We got a portion value of the materials that were then, okay, you get, you know, X amount of credits. These are worth so many credits each. Which do you want kind of stuff? And then uh, Captain Borden tells us that his company will be ready to move out in a week. So one week later. Troops are gathered out in front of Herman's, just like, you know, previously. Oh, there he is. There's 20 of these guys. 
um, several of which have the symbols of the mailed fist. <clears throat> and that had been discussed. I had actually forgotten about that, but that was discussed in a previous encounter where Runt had come across this carving back in one of the pews in the church of this mailed fist and asked about it. And found out that there's this you know, misogynistic group who's kind of cantankerous against the, um, the sea goddess. Uh, so there's some bad blood between them, but these mailed fist guys generally work right for the Baron. Okay, all these guys have got chain hauberks. The captain, Captain uh, Borden, also has a plate cuirass, plate grease, and van braces. Um, and it looks like, you know, all these guys have sword and shields. They've all been outfitted, right? So they're, they're issued some items, it looks like. About a third of these guys have got short bows. And as we're traveling along, they're positioned in the middle. Okay, there are three, uh, three of these guys, you know, are much more experienced than everybody else, right? Um, there's the captain, obviously, and he's got two, uh, uh, what the team called non-coms, right? And one's in charge of half of each of the rest of the guys kind of thing. So these guys have got more experience than we do. And the captain has even more, you know, as, as, as some of the guys, some of the players are kind of looking at the people as we're traveling and talking and finding stuff out. Okay, so it takes us eight days uh, to get to the valley. There were several encounters uh, in route to the valley, but we're, you know, avoiding things like that, right? Or they're long distance engaging, like there's some goblins up on the hills that see us when we got to kind of watch us and stay out of the way. But nobody's going to, you know, attack an armed party of 20, 20 guys, right? There's one interesting encounter on the fifth day. In the distance, we see a couple of giants. And board calls a halt. And they kind of, you know, hide out kind of thing and allow the giants to pass. He's very concerned. He's never seen giants, you know, this close. I'm surprised. No admission. Yeah, we had one actually <laughs> come through the woods by where we live. So something's going on. But that was not brought up. Okay. Uh, we continue to travel north on the road out of Kars. We stay to the west side of the mountains. This is something I need to do if you can draw some map because I am still completely um, confused about the, the, the geography here. Okay, but he, he's trying to explain it again. Okay, so <clears throat> we travel north out of Kars. We stay to the west side of the mountains. We're on a fjord, right? So there are mountains on the east. We continue on that road that follows the mountain chain that turns westward along the coast of the fjord. So I'm thinking we're doing a U kind of thing. I'm not sure though. Um, and then we go on to the mountains that divide Forg's kingdom from the barbarian lands to the east. Barbarian lands east, Forg's kingdom to the north. Well, to the west, but I think it's north as well. There are mountains to either side where we set up camp and uh, he sends out uh, a handful of his soldiers to go investigate the immediate area. You know, they, they take off their chain, they suit up in leather, and they take off for a couple of days. We just kind of hang out, relax, taking the sights. Um, a couple of days later, oh, this camp itself is a said campsite. I mean, it's obvious people come here and camp, right? Um, and it looks like. Um, Borden and his guys have actually camped here themselves before. Okay. And as they set up their camp, it's kind of circular. And we're in, in the central area with the cooking area and the commons, common area stuff. And we hang tight for a couple days. Two days go by. Okay, the scouts return and report that to the north is a small group of locals. I think they called them... Um, Rakes? Maybe rats. I maybe misunderstood the but when they ask about how old these, these guys are, they're really young or adolescents. So Borden thinks there's nothing to worry about, that the village is outside the barren, the media control, you know, they they um, listen to and follow the local Jarls who are trying to set up their own power base, right? Um, so villages often send their youth out as you know, coming of age kind of thing, go out and survive in the wilderness for a week and um, Know, find some kind of trophy to bring back that you know maybe we fought goblins or we found this thing and you know, that kind of stuff. 
And it does kind of warn us if we run into these guys, we run into these kids. Obviously, we do not want to have a fight because if any of them get killed, that will cause problems between us and the local villages, and we don't don't need that. There has been some movement of orcs in the valley, uh, but to what extent it was hard to say. Just you know, there are orcs here. There is a road or a path that follows the river or the stream, <laughs> all the way up into the pass. But you know, there are spots where you kind of lose it, or just kind of vanishes because of erosion, that kind of stuff, right? Okay. There are old farmsteads out here, you know, like two thousand year old farmsteads. So they've been, you know buried right and so sometimes we'll see chimney stacks and stuff that come up and then uh gordon does warn us about one other thing a lot of magic was used in fighting up here and things that were lost so there are places that have residue from the fighting um, that old historian back in town who was now gone had ideas that the land may have been altered in some way so weird things can happen um, like he'll try to do something with his magic and he just will not behave the way he was expecting. Okay, next morning we head out. Um, valley runs off to the northwest. Uh, where the stream comes out of the, the narrows um, down to where we're camped. Um, Alexander starts using some of his ranger magic, you know, pathfinding and something else. And so we start following this path along the river. You know, there's game trails all over the place. He does path force wheels. Okay, this one does go into the pass. And just driving along, we come across tracks of the, these youth, right? Um, and it looks like they are actually following some goblins. Um, but after a few hours, both the goblins and the youth tracks head off the trail. We decide to continue on. Uh, as we continue, though, Raymond finds what looks like exposed worked stone. So we clear it all off, and sure enough, it's a chimney, right? Mortared in river rock. Obviously, it's been eroded over thousands of years, but, you know, hey, it's, it's there. So, you know, Wes does his, his directed light spell down the thing. It's about two stories and it goes 50 feet. So, it lights up the chimney place. Obviously, there's roots and stuff and things, but nothing that won't stop somebody from climbing down, apparently. And down the bottom, there's an opening on one side. Okay, so Runt, who's our smallest guy who is a climber and kind of roguey, um, Wes casts. A, a standard light spell on on a torch that lasts for like 30 minutes and it gives off a 10 foot radius light uh, but he's not burning anything it's not going to catch a fire <laughs> he's trying to climb down right so he climbs down we do put a rope around for safety purposes and okay the opening uh he goes through the opening there are stone walls there's a 20 by 15 room right there's a ruined door there's some windows obviously there's all kinds of sediment um that's that crept in through the door and the windows and it's all over the floor. The beams of the roof seem to be in decent shape, but everything else is pretty much rotted. Um, so Runt is going to, well, he searches around, he finds a chest, but there's, you know, nothing in it. You know, rusted utensils and rotted cloth of some kind, right? And as he's searching around, he smells the scent of decay. At that, he pulls out his magic dagger that he got from our previous adventure and is glowing, glows in the presence of undead. Um, so, up top, we don't know what's really going on, but we hear this crash, right? And then Runt um, uh, is scrambling <laughs> to the fireplace saying, pull me up, pull me up, pull me up. <laughs> so what happened is there's this loft. And he thinks, well, the first down here, maybe there's something up in the loft. And people sleep. Um, so, he finds a table and he brings it over and he climbs up on the table and uses it to jump and try to grab a hold of the loft kind of thing. But as soon as he starts to do that jump thing, you know, you've got your total weight on it. Plus you're pushing down on the table in order to get the lift to go up. So when that happens, it just crushes and he just kind of whack, falls to the ground. And um, fairly soon after that, there was another crash because something up in the loft starts to move and the loft crumbles down. Um, so as Runt is, we're trying to pull Runt up the day up the up the uh, the chimney. And there's a there's a strength versus size resistance roll to roll, right? 
West got strength, strength of 10. Rings got strength of 17. Uh, so that's 27 against run size of 9, right? So that's 100%. But then there's always that 96 and above that's a failure and double up that's a fumble, right? And, uh, okay, Raymond, go ahead and make a roll. He rolls a 98. <laughs> I want to say, the guys tell the best stories. Uh, so there's there's a, a stage of time where whatever chasing run gets closer. We managed to get run out of the uh, chimney before this thing comes up. It's a Drugar. And it's kind of funny because Brian was thinking, you know, the last time we messed with buildings north of the inlet, there were Drugar there. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Okay, so um, he's climbing the chimney. Shit, 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 shit. Uh, we pull Runt. Um, oh, pull him out. He draws his dagger and says, There's undead down there. Um, Drugar did make a special on his second climb roll, so he's climbing out of the chimney up on top. At that, West jumps back and prepares to do an overcharged um, shock bolt. Uh, Raymond casts his turn undead five, which was not successful. Well, rather, he cast it, but the Drugar resisted. And uh, West got his overcharged shock bolt out, and it was a special. Um, and um, the GM was reading through, you know, his rules on this kind of stuff, you know, that it, it, the special will do an impale type damage. And if it's a critical, it adds heat damage. Um, and so uh, I need to put that in my notes <laughs> because there was some question about that earlier. Um, so he ends up, you know, he, put, he put four points of, four magic points into that spell. So it did 4d4 damage, which turned out to be 29 total uh, to the Drugar's right arm, which is enough to make him drop. Oh, he came out with this axe, right? There's an axe with with etched runes in the blade that are inlaid with silver. Okay, so we're thinking powerful magic stuff here, right? So we're all freaking about that. Um, and uh, But that's the right arm. So he drops the axe, which everybody is happy about. Um, Alexander's got uh, magic. Broadsword, it does, you know, it's, it's a plus one magic weapon, so it does one point of damage because it takes magic to damage this thing. Um, the Drugar attacks Runt and damages his right arm, so he drops the dagger. Um, actually goes into shock. He almost almost got triple damage on that thing. Um, Raymond reaches for the, the dagger, and Alexander's up there continue to whack him, but Alexander hit him like twice in the head. Um, and then Raymond was able to dodge, so he didn't get hit. Um, I did some damage with the dagger. And then Wes missed one round on his, his spell casting, but on the third round of spell casting, he did it. Another, ate another special. Don't remember how much damage he did, but it was enough to put the Drugar down. So we've got the chain hauberk that the Drugar was wearing, plus that silver inlaid rune encrusted uh, axe. So that's that's something. Um, there was some mention from Runt about hey, there's this hummingbird sound like thing that had flown past him while he was down at the bottom. Did we see or hear anything? And we hadn't. We Try to read the runes on the axe, and nobody can read it. Um, but uh, there's some discussion. Okay, what do we do next? And, and we finally decide. Okay, let's just we all climb down inside the house. We make camp inside the house. Um, in searching, we do find a chest that had some coins. But um, and there were other remains of bodies in here. So somebody else, you know, like like somebody come through. Soldiers come through and kill people here, kind of thing. Um, and we decide, okay, we're going to, you know, claw out niches from the front door and to you know, place the bodies, try to do some kind of burial thing for them. Um, at that point, the GM's throat was really hurting him, so that's where we ended the session. Happy gaming.